Hi guys, and welcome to the Sutherland vs Hull match review. Now, uh, firstly, I just want to say thank you to those who did join the live stream. I am uh, going to start live streaming a lot more, as and when I can, um, when it comes to live streaming games and commentary and stuff like that. So those who did join, I do appreciate you. Um, and as you can tell, I'm just really, really drained now. You know, that game, you know, I can only reflect and bounce off what I watch, and it was just... It, it was poor football for large parts, particularly that first half. I found the opening 10 minutes or so, um, it was sort of trading blows. They'd drive at us, we'd nick it off them. We'd drive at them, they'd nick it off us without really making anything. You know, the first half, they had one chance, one shot the entire half, and it was Coyle who ran almost the length of the pitch. Job, who, if you watch my live stream, you would see now. I'm trying not to get on his back, but I keep on saying and keep on reiterating that the lad needs a break. And how he keeps on getting these 90 minutes, I don't know, because he's not really contributing. And certainly off the ball, it, it, he is absolutely all over the place, unfortunately. You know, in terms of, you can just see he's knackered. Like I said, with that chance with Coyle, Job is literally a couple of yards away from Coyle the whole time, but he's just slowly jogging behind him whilst Coyle, you know, considerably older than him, is busting a gut, driving forward, and Joe just watching right behind him, slowly going behind him, and he's he's just knackered the lad. He's absolutely knackered, balls bobbling off him all the time. It, it just it just doesn't it's, it's almost like he's losing sharpness with more game time and it's just it's so easy for everyone to see that he needs to be to be dropped to the given a rest at least. Because he's got a quality of the lad, but we're gonna run the risk of running him into the ground and I keep repeating myself with that. But we did see Seals coming to the right hand side as well, who I think looked okay um, with Hume going over to the left hand side, which he said himself isn't too comfortable on that side. And you can see as well, he's sort of well, on the right hand side, he's, he's a lot more clever in his runs that he makes off the ball. But I think because he's just so uncomfortable and so unfamiliar on that left hand side, his runs are very ineffective, which leaves again Clark all on his own on the left hand side, largely. The second he gets the ball, Jack Clark on the left hand side, three whole men around him, and he can't do anything about it. Only towards the last stages were, were they only sort of giving leaving one man on him, which was Coyle, and he was getting it to the byline a lot more. But um, yeah, first half, it, you could argue that it may have been more in Hull's favour, although we did have, I think it was three shots, they had the biggest chance of, of the most clear-cut opportunity. They did have large chunks of possession. Our press after two minutes totally disappeared. Um, you know, there was one time where Pritchard did just fling himself forward, you know, firing um, along the along the back line trying to run off the ball and he's looking at the rest of us like going like come on what are you doing type thing and everyone's just kind of slowly walking about and it just it just was again no one's on the same wavelength second half we actually looked a lot better in terms of controlling the play dominating the play and even though we were screaming out for subs to be made it's like an absolute fucking age yet again be able to make substitutions um it was only after we conceded you know it took well, I think we 20, 20, 25 minutes in that second half, we're starting to control it. You start to see momentum. And I think that's why Beale thought, oh, maybe I'll, I'll leave it. But even so, we were crying out for changes to be made after that poor showing in the first half. But then their first opportunity in the second, um, the ball is put forward, pumped forward by Hull. Uh, Luke 09 has tried to nod it back to uh, Pato. And then it's a loose one. And it's a sort of 50-50. Sharp has got in, in, in between the ball uh, and, and Pato. He's shown his experience, Sharp, who's come on. Is it a foul? Probably it is. It hasn't been given, though. Um, and it goes out for a corner because Pato did try and claim it and then Chop's obviously got in his way and he's, he's hit the deck. Pato, everyone's screaming out for a free kick, not being given. But that does not excuse, even if it is a free kick, that does not excuse the absolutely atrocious defending from the set piece again. Drilled it in, they're queuing up in the box. The first time they've come into our area, anyway, near our box all our, of all that second half, they've put it in. They're literally playing it around our box. No one's pressing the man. They're giving it all the time in the world to recycle it to the edge of the box. Cuts it back to Carvalho on the volley. I think it takes a deflection, it's the back of the net. We just stood there watching. No urgency. There's no game plan when it comes to defending set pieces whatsoever. It's a fucking joke. And now we've gifted them something to sit back and hold on to. And that's exactly what they did. The only... I was trying to, at the end of the live stream, trying to clamour to any kind of positivity. And one thing, when Hamia did come on, brought off Bruce in, put on Hamia. And I don't think he looked half bad. I don't think Hamia looked half bad at all. A couple of times where we were, you know, we, we did have to resort to pumping it forward rather than just slamming it against Bruce in, who was only a little lad, but you know, he was giving no service. But with... Hamia, we have something to try and stick on to, that number nine. 
and we did a couple of times when he did we'd pump it forward and he'd hold it really well and st sidestep his man before shifting it on and then making it running behind and he did that a handful of times there was one time I think just out of pure frustration of lack of game time he picked it up 35 yards out and he slammed it it's hit the target to be fair hard and low but the keepers made the save but he did look he looked like he was more of a handful he gave him something to think about and when Clark has the ball left on side we know he's either going to get it to the byline and drill it across goal or he's going to cut inside and go for goal himself but it gave him that other option of actually putting in the put the ball in the box because no one else is going to get there. When you've got Alex Pritchard and Rusin stood up against six foot three, six foot four men, you're not going to get shit. Do you know what I mean? But Hamia, he gave him something to think about, and a few, you know, if on another day he might have gotten the end of a cross or two. You never know. Speaking of crosses, our set pieces where I think it was ten corners in the end, they were absolutely appalling. A large portion of them from Alex Pritch, sorry, Alex Pritchard. A lot of them hitting the first man. It just was not our day. But how many times I want to say it's just not our day? How many times? And, and people are saying Beal out. And, you know, I don't really want Beal here either. He's not my first choice. It, he's not going to sack him after six games, unfortunately. It, I think it would be slightly refreshing if we just, he just said, right, I've bollocked here. I've made, I've made a mistake. Right, here we go. I'll admit to it. Put someone else in. But that's not going to happen. Sadly, as much as we might not have wanted Beal... And, you know, I've never seen so much negativity. And myself, I've, been, I've contributed somewhat, you know. I've never seen a, a, a manager or a coach appointed to be greeted with such negativity ever. And I think that speaks volumes. And I've seen in my live stream as well, some saying, you know, Tony Mowbray should never have been sacked. Some anyway. But I, I, what it is, it's two separate things between should Mowbray have been sacked or should Beal have been appointed. Those are two separate things. I believe it was time for a change when Mowbray was sacked. It was time for a change. Do I think it should have been Beal? No, I don't. But he's here, and sadly, I'd, if we'll, even if we were losing games, and I could see that he was trying to implement something, granted, I know it's only been six games, but if I could see, oh yeah, he's trying to do this, then I'd be like, oh, okay, right, maybe with a few more games, or however many weeks, whatever, maybe that'll start working. I can't see anything. If anything, there is zero game plan. Nothing. Plays up miles off it. We're regressing from when we were with Mowbray. Um, there doesn't seem to be a real game plan. It's like he's just putting an 11 out there and seeing what happens and seeing what sticks and nothing is, which is a massive, massive concern. So we've been beaten by Hull, who, you know, fair play to them. If we, I was saying it again, and I keep making reference to the live stream, but when it went nil nil, you know, prior to that, I probably would have taken a draw had you know, because Hull were. You know, so far this season, they've been fantastic. But Hull, they come to the stage of my life, losing four out of the last five. They've got Delap missing. They've got Seri missing to AFCON. They've got Connolly, who's been brilliant this season for him, missing. This was the ideal time to meet Hull. And again, I said, Sunderland are the team. That when there's a team that need, they need a duck breaking, needs to break a duck, Sunderland just bend over and say, there you go, lad, take it. And that's exactly what we've done yet again. So we've fallen further away from the, the pile now, from, from the top six. Uh, I think we've dropped to 8th now, I believe, 7th or 8th, um, with all the games to be played tomorrow, of course. Um, and it's it's hard to try and stay positive with a team that it just should be doing so much better. We need players. We need, obviously, we need additions. But we also need some change in system-wise. You know, for a large part, we had triple, Jack Clark were tripled up on. And he needs to start chopping and changing wings. Or Beal needs to tell him to move, you know, maybe drift into the centre, swap in with Pritchard, stick him on the left. And throughout the game, when things are, when they're stacking up against Clark, move him. Shift him for a few minutes here and there. Make them think. Don't be so unbelievably fucking predictable. Do you know what I mean? But there we go. I feel like I'm just beating a dead horse at the minute. 1 0 to Hull. Phenomenal work, guys. Oh, I can't be arsed. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Let me know. Hit the like button for me. That'd help. That'd put a smile back in my face. Uh, take care. Stay jammy. Have a good one.